Hey guys, uh, I want to do a quick tutorial on using uh, Microsoft's remote desktop uh, to connect from one to another computer. It's very simple. Um, basically we have this Windows 7 machine here um, that we will want to connect to this other Windows 7 machine and connect onto their desktop. Um, so the requirements on the server machine, if you will, um, the machine you want to connect to, there has to be an account um, that is password protected. So what I did, I went ahead and created a test user uh, with a password of test um, and created him there separate. As you can see, I've got two accounts. The Windows user account does not have a password on it that I gave it, but I have a test account that does have a password. Um, so after you have created this other account or you have added a password to your current account, you can come here and go to control panel and you'll go to system and system again and there's an option for remote settings right here and this box will come up uh, remote assistance is just like tech support um, it's, it's kinda neat but it's not quite what we're working with right now uh, below it you'll see a section for remote desktop by default uh, it's not set to not allow connections to the computer so we're gonna go ahead and enable it now uh, this one is computers running any version of remote desktop so you can connect to this from older versions of remote desktop on like Windows 2000, Windows XP and so on um, so we're gonna do that just to uh, just to be sure that uh, the one we're connecting from will work uh, you can also narrow it down to uh, to only you know using a higher authentication down here so um, I always use the middle one it'll work every time so we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and hit OK now you see we have our IP address here that we'll want to connect to so let's switch back over to the uh, client machine here if you will and on Windows Vista and Windows 7 you can actually type in remote um, and it will finish it out and give you the remote desktop connection client here so um, on all versions of Windows, the um, the executable is actually MSTSC, uh, which stands for Microsoft Terminal Services Console. Um, so that's a good way you'll always find it. As you see, I've done this before. We're going to connect to 192.168.100.100, which, as you can see, is this machine right here. So let's go ahead and hit connect. And I'll give you a prompt asking you if you trust it. Um, you can or you can sit, don't ask me again. And um, as you can see, if, if you have multiple accounts, you can click this and log into a different one on the remote box. Uh, but since we created the test user account, we're going to go ahead and type in test and hit OK. And we're going to connect. Now, since I'm logged on using a different user than the test user, I'm going to get this prompt right here. It's basically saying that there's another user logged on. And there's also going to be a prompt on the remote side. Now let me move these out of the way. And you will see when I hit yes, right here, basically saying we want to kick off the other user so we can log in. This is going to ask, you know, we want to log in using the test account. Uh, hit yes or no, basically. And we're going to hit OK. And that's going to sign out that current account, see the Windows user is uh, was logged on and uh, now we're coming into the test account so we're gonna let this load here for a second since it's the first time we are logging on to it okay so the desktop came back up here um, took a little while to log in since it was the first time uh, configuration for a new user that we created so this is the test users account you can see here. Um, now, best indication that you're logged in remotely, you'll see this little bar up at the top uh, giving you the IP address or host name uh, of the machine that you're connected to. Um, so this is basically it. So we can minimize this and we can actually see both desktops at the same time. Uh, this is uh, it's pretty helpful, especially if you're working remotely or if you have a server that you need to connect to and work on and so on. Um, let's go ahead and close this. So there's another thing I want to show you. There's more advanced settings we can do. Uh, so let's go back into the remote desktop and let's hit options here. And uh, you can come in here and you can modify uh, the uh, display options 
for the connection. You can make it smaller or larger as far as the resolution. Uh, this will save on bandwidth, so if you have a slow internet connection and you're connecting over the internet, um, then uh, adjusting these will actually make the uh, connection go a little bit faster. So uh, you may want to use them. If you're connecting on the LAN, then you're fine. Um, you can probably turn these up a little bit higher if you really need to. Uh, local resources right here is what I really want to stress about. At the bottom, you'll see there's local devices and resources. We can hit more, and we can actually network mount the drives. Um, so by default, this is unchecked, so keep it checked. And basically what this does is once we connect, let's go ahead and connect back in, it'll mount the local computer's drives as network drives. That way you can pass files between them. Um, so you'll see here's A, C, and D, and these are mounted from this computer that we came from. As you can see, A, there's no floppy, D is that, and C is my regular drive. So we can actually pass right here, and then there we go, new file. So you can actually pass files um, through the connection there, and uh, that's one of the more helpful things. You can also use printers that are on the local machine uh, and audio gateways and everything like that. So that's really what I'm going to go over with. It's the end of the tutorial here. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe and like. Uh, I'll be creating uh, a lot more tutorials on computer issues, uh, mainly stressing on security. Uh, so check those out as well. Thanks, guys. Bye.